what's good fam we are back at it with another video man another prim hood cinema joint now this one is the second part of best and worst fake tv uh musicians um the last one was pretty cool but there's something he he kind of like dragged on i was like hey bro those, those was good man you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but we agree to disagree. Now, here goes, of course. I'm making sure the disclaimer is up there. You know what I'm saying? So, this could go perfectly. Hopefully. If this, if y'all don't see it on YouTube, it's on uh, Rumble. So, yeah, man. Let's jump straight into it, y'all. Yo, Samson gets me lifted by my main man, who? Sure, smoke a lot. I want to talk to Sam. Hold up, hold up. I didn't know he was going to start with this one. <laughs> I forgot what his name was. <laughs> Samson gets me lifted by my main man, who? <laughs> sure, smoke a lot. Ah. I want to talk, talk to Samson. Climbing <laughs> to the moon, I said, bitch, down the tram. Because it's hard being black and gifted. First up is Sir Smoke a Lot from Half Baked. <laughs> Of course, Dave Chappelle can't make a good weed song. All you do is listen to Talib Kweli all day, and most deaf and shit. The production sure. value on the video, though, is actually kind of impressive. They <laughs> covered all the walls and furniture with weed, weed curtains. That's a nice touch. I can't believe I forgot to mention him last time. He's in a thumbnail and everything. This nigga is funny as hell, too. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> Bro was punching his own security in the face for no reason. That's hilarious. The song itself, though, is ass. It's not Very listenable much. at all. Not even ironically. His bars are mediocre. He only raps about weed. This nigga like Wiz Khalifa. Everybody knows in my neighborhood, it's the best test around. Says the shit is blessed. You got the whole town on lockdown. The beat is trash, too. It's this super generic ass drum. It's just that I want to talk to Samson. That's the only part. I'm a loop. It's <laughs> barely like even a beat. Not to mention, this nigga used the same beat for both the songs. Y'all not even trying. When life is hard, I pick up that car with the smiley face. Call him over to my place. Sometimes I just want to blow it all down and get left it. Sir Smoke A Lot isn't like a huge part of the movie. So of course they're not going to spend too much time on the songs. I'm just being silly. I know it's bad on purpose. I'm not taking it seriously. It's just a joke. Leave your stupid comments in your pocket. They crudely duct taped some corn rolls onto Dave Chappelle's head. Dr. No Dr. hairline, Dr. no nothing. That's pretty funny as well. This nigga got the <laughs> Scorpion King hairline. Doctor said I need a bacchiotomy. Bro is definitely a snitching ass nigga too. He mentions all his drug dealers by name, making it super Yo, hot for everybody. Did. Actually, nah, that's standard nowadays. Maybe he was on to something. I want to talk to Sam. When life is hard, I pick up that car with the smiley face. Samson, looks like somebody's coming into your business, baby. Again, the movie is hilarious. Shout out to Dave Chappelle. Shout out to Sir Smoke a Lot. Still better than Wiz Khalifa, honestly. Bruh, Wiz Khalifa can spit, man. <laughs> Don't do that. Up next is arguably one of the best fake rappers of all time, DJ Maine. I'm pretty sure this is his full name. Maine is DJ Maine. DJ, 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 my man. DJ's fake pimp songs went so hard, they gave him a Grammy for it. I mean, an Oscar, a music Oscar. That's kind of confusing. I've talked at length about hustle and flow. I heard Terrence Howard ain't, give, ain't really get that much for that fucking song. They put it under the word DJ. They ain't put his name on it. It's fucked up, ain't it? Oh, I did a whole video on it. Basically, DJ is a pimp and he lives in Memphis. He's almost 40 years old when he starts trying to get his rap career going. That sounds hilarious, right? It's not a comedy. That's not funny, bro. Real fast, shake it, shake it real fast. Put your hands on your knees. He teams up with his friends Anthony Anderson and DJ Qualls and Taraji P. Henson. They all in this musty ass, young ass room. They got old ass, out of date equipment and no money, but they still works. able to make something happen. It's a beautiful yeah. story, all jokes aside. DJ songs feel like actual real songs that a nigga would listen to also. Not some random improvised nonsense like some of the other entries. It helps yeah. that all the songs were composed by real life Memphis rap legends, 3-6 Mafia. Lil Jon was also in there cooking up some beats. 
Of course, it's gonna be he. Bars. Yeah. Terrence Howard does an amazing job as DJ. His rapping can be a little awkward, but his pimping, on the other hand, is very believable. Overall, the performance is top tier. He also beats the shit out of Ludacris in the men's room. I enjoyed DJ. that. That's some DJ. extra points. I found a full version of Whoop That Trick. It's like five minutes long. It's That's crazy. way too long, bro. But man, that beat is crazy. I love this song. DJ is washing every other fake rapper in the verses 100%. Like I said, I already did a whole review on the movie. Check it out if you haven't seen it. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. Go watch it. Don't be a lemon lane. <laughs> Top 10 mistakes that I see beginner videographers making. Number one is using the wrong camera settings, not knowing how to properly set. So Al Pacino is a fake rapper oh. from the 2008 <laughs> film Tropic. I almost forgot about this nigga, man. I don't know who the fuck is it? Thunder. He's played by Brandon T. Jackson. Dude, he was trash. He all star. He's in like four movies his whole career, but he's still all star. <laughs> Al Pacino is like a parody slash commentary on all those 2000s bling era rappers, soldier boy type beats. His name is based on the actor Al Pacino. No shit, right? That's pretty funny though. Niggas definitely be doing that. Taking an already existing person's name and just changing it slightly and now it's your rap name. Sometimes they don't even change it. I don't know about y'all. I consider that meat writing to the highest extent. That's insane, bro. You're gonna take another grown man's name like y'all got married and shit? Towards the end of the movie, we find out that Al Pacino was overcompensating the whole time. Thanks. In all his songs, he raps about how much he loves pussy, but he's secretly gay and right. he comes out by the end of the movie. I don't <laughs> yeah. know if that's part of the commentary or not. Rappers definitely be gay sometimes. It's probably commentary. I was he just about to say that. I was just about to say that. It, it, it Tropic Thunder did have some real shit into it because there's a lot of rappers that, you know what I'm saying, especially what's going on now, you know what I'm saying? A lot of motherfuckers getting exposed. <laughs> he apparently also has this brand deal with booty sweats, energy drink, and bust a nut bars. Who the fuck would ever eat a bust a nut bar? Nigga, that's gay. You gay are. But it's the fact that rappers be putting out stupid shit like that, like Sexy Red. She putting out like lip gloss with the names of STDs. It makes sense. It makes fucking sense. Already. All jokes aside, I really do enjoy Al Pacino's character art. On the surface, he's that typical flashy, overconfident rapper, but he's more self-aware than he lets on. He's struggling with the idea of being a sellout and the gayness. He's struggling with the gayness as well. For the last time, I love the pussy. Man, everyone's gay once in a while. I'm not gay. Just I'm gonna do this. We don't get to hear much of Al Pacino's music throughout the film, Thank but God. I can safely assume that all of it is some butt ass. He's a great character, though, with a bunch of layers. The whole movie is hilarious still to this day. Definitely give it a watch if you've never seen it. Blackface. You just you got to mention that every time you talk about this movie. I don't believe you people. What do you mean, you people? What do you mean, you people? <laughs> Lethal Interjection is up next. Man, that F Granddad song is unironically fire. It's so catchy, bro. <laughs> they picked the right motherfuckers to play them, like Snoop Buster Rhymes and all. Yo. <laughs> oh, fuck. I was gonna put Gangsta Licious up here, but I definitely feel like Lethal Interjection and Thugnificent go way harder. Plus, Gangsta Licious is only in like that one episode. Thugnificent True. is legit a reoccurring character after a while. Right. Lethal Interjection is a cool ass name, by the way, for a rap group, and they're voiced by real life hip hop legends. Mactastic and Flownominal are voiced by Snoop Dogg and Busta Rhymes. Mm -hmm. You can't beat that, bro. Can somebody tell me what time it is? What the fuck wrong with your wife? Shit, nigga, the sun is reflecting all this ice. I can't see a motherfucking thing. Man, get the fuck out nah, of here. Nah, for real, nigga, look. Ah, uh -huh. shit. Thugnificent is another parody of those over-the-top 2000 bling rappers. 
Big ass white tees. The Boondocks writers absolutely nailed this satire. Facts. I feel like he's way more accurate than somebody like Al Pacino. And he's got more hits too. Booty butts, booty butt cheeks. Booty butt That's a cheeks. classic. D riding Obama. Cheeks. There's actually a whole mixtape out there. There's a real Rags to Bitches mixtape. It's got like seven songs. No skips at all, in my opinion. Thugnificent himself is a parody of Ludacris, according to the fan base. What? I guess, right? I never noticed that. Unlike Ludacris, though, this nigga ain't have no damn Fast and Furious movies to save him from the fall off. And we get to see said fall off in the season three episode, Bitches to Rags. He got to get a real job. He ends up working for UPS or something. It's a lot going on with him. Sad How do you like the new job? Oh, man, it's some old bullshit. Hey, wake up, old nigga. Just want to let you know, until we get this reality show money, the boy Thug is going to be right here. Just like Al Pacino, Thug Nificent is a representation of how cold and unstable the music industry is. Thanks. Again, shout out to these Boondocks writers for getting this shit so accurate too, man. It's a great show. It's a great character. Catchy ass songs. You good in my book, Thug Nificent. Just, man, just so My God. I thought the damn rapping Winslows were bad. Okay, well, they are. But so are these niggas. Now, I'm the dad. I make all this happen. Harriet, I'm sick and tired of all of this rapping. If you ever heard me talk about Moesha before, or if you watched the show yourself, you're aware of how Ray J took over and ruined the entire thing. They kept insisting on how cool he was in every scene. They tried on three separate occasions to shoehorn him into the show before they were successful. I thought Freestyle Unity had Kim, the thick ass white girl Stevie, and uh, what's his name? I forgot what the hell his name was. But the dude that was with him, I thought that was Freestyle Unity. The later seasons definitely just became the Ray J show after yeah, a certain Black point. He joins did. his rap group called What? Again, the stupid ass name. It's supposed to be funny. It's not even funny. Oh, right. They got the OG Black Power Ranger. I just said that. I take that back. I thought it was. I thought it was them. In their group too. Having a shape up like that on your team is an man, automatic L. This look like a fire hydrant. The this is the worst group in the list. God, these niggas suck, man. <laughs> Freestyle Unity is slightly better. Even still, right. I used to hate when they stopped the whole show for this generic ass performance. They be performing like a whole four minute songs and shit. I Countess Vaughn shit. does have a good voice. Stevie, her homegirl, is fat as shits. Their performances are definitely better. Yeah. Who the hell is this lady? Don't move, let me do what I do. I need a woman in my life, and I'm thinking it's you. That was a fine ass white girl, boy. Lord. Either way, yeah. For everybody talking about Topanga. I had Stevie, and she was way better than Topanga. Fight me. They're not as bad as what, but it's generic as hell, and I wish they didn't include these musical elements at all. I put these two bands on the same entry just because they're both from the Moesha UPN universe. Freestyle Unity is Kim Parker's hip hop group from the Moesha spinoff, The Parkers. They first appear in season two and they singing and bothering everybody at their community college. Now, again, they're not the worst group on the list. Yeah. They just kind of mid and unnecessary. <laughs> They also had better songs. They this were catchy. Game. You're not ready. Now I'll admit, I never actually watched Empire. I know. Me either. I only watched one episode and was like, eh, I'll pass. I'm a horrible black person. Move this man! <laughs> I almost didn't include any of these characters, but I looked up some of the songs on YouTube, and they're not bad. Some I've definitely right. heard a couple of these out in the wild, on the radio or somewhere. I don't know. People actually bump these songs outside <laughs> of the show, though. That's impressive. What is going on? Damn, he threw that nigga in the trash can. That's awful, bro. How you even fitting that motherfucker? You couldn't at least take that nigga to a dumpster or something? He balled that nigga up and threw him in a regular ass trash can. He said the trash man gonna raise you now. A lot of these songs are generic and cheesy. I watched a few of these battle rap scenes. That shit, that shit is stupid. 
They kind of spitting, but it's still hella corny. Maybe less so in the context of the show. I don't know. I never seen it. I don't give a damn where you came from. You spit it in a honey bun. On the same stage, you should be grateful. You about to get peeled like a grapefruit. Also, this drip drop song, I've definitely heard it before. This shit is major ass. Make that thing go. I am intrigued now though. I'm definitely gonna watch this shit at some point. I've never been big into like those net I'm not network TV dramas. This one looks alright though. Not much to say about this entry. I haven't watched the damn show. This nigga Jesse Smollett can sing though. He's a good dude. I don't know why them Jamaican dudes beat him up. Sad hood movie. <laughs> I'm gonna keep it a book. When I watched the, I watched some of them show Star. They had better music. They definitely had better music. There is no universe where Chris Rock is a successful gangster rapper. Nobody is buying this, bro. This is another group that's whack on purpose. It's a silly ass movie full of silly ass rapping. Even still, the songs aren't even that funny. They're the least funny parts of the movie. And they some perpetrating ass niggas the whole time. I'm not listening to this. If you've never seen it, the movie follows these three friends who form a rap group called CB4. It's Chris Rock, Jason Lyric, and... This other nigga, <laughs> I don't know this nigga, man. What's your name, bitch? They start off as a bunch of cornballs and they go through a bunch of fake identities before they settle on this diet NWA type deal, which Easy E has a cameo in the movie. Clearly, NWA exists in this universe, so they blatantly bite in other rappers. Also, Chris Rock names himself MC Gusto after this gangster character here. When did Easy E come into the movie? I ain't seen him. Who gets I locked up? That's biting again. He stole Charlie Murphy's whole identity. And when I heard those people chant his name, I figured he won't need it anytime soon. They're not genuine at all. They don't sound good, but that's the whole joke. So you can't really dwell on it too much. They still ask though. I wouldn't listen to this shit. It's not even funny. Full review coming soon, by the way. Good movie. <laughs> Bro, Dream Girls was amazing. Don't be you better not say nothing wrong about Eddie Murphy, man. Up next are the dreams from Dream Girls. Now I haven't seen the movie in a while, but I remember the music being solid. The whole movie was a big deal when it came out. Even Jennifer Hudson got one of those music Oscars we were talking about. And this is low-key cheating though. Beyonce's in the movie. What? Music Oscars we were talking about. This is low-key cheating, though. Beyonce's in the movie, and Jennifer what you mean? for Hudson, and Jamie Foxx. They're all real-ass musicians. But shut the fuck up, man. Goddamn. <laughs> so Dreamgirls is a musical drama released in 2006. It's set in the 60s and is about this singing trio called The Dreams. Apparently, the story is loosely based on the real life group, The Supremes. Yeah. Jennifer Hudson plays the lead singer, but they're trying to push her out of the group for Beyonce because she's sexier or something. Something like that. I haven't watched it in a while. Eddie Murphy's in it, though. He even gets his own song. <laughs> Side note, are y'all aware of Eddie Murphy's <laughs> reggae alter ego? He be making yeah. reggae songs and shit. Not trying to roast him or nothing. They sound okay. It's still hilarious, though. Red light, I heard that one. <laughs> Anyway, back to Dream Girls. The whole soundtrack is full of a good mix of soul music and R&B and pop. And of course, Jennifer Hudson's standout performance solidifies the whole thing. She killed it, bro. She Facts. sang that one song that all the big ladies be singing. You know the song. <laughs> Took it to the next level, too. All right, now, Dick Prim, they got some folk that'll try to fight you about the cheetah girls, man. 
Oh, no. Nah. These weak ass kids bop type beats. Of course, I'm not gonna like this. I'm not a 12 year old girl. Disney Channel movies in general are so lame. I hate all these weenie ass movies. Fight me, I don't care. But the Cheetah Girls came from this 2003 Disney Channel original movie. This group in particular is super unique for the simple fact that they actually went on real tours and became a real singing group somewhat, at least for a little bit. I did used to have a huge crush on Raven Simone. Even still, I could barely get through this movie back in the day. It's that bad. <laughs> Nigga, what the hell is a cheetah sister? Y'all saying anything. They really had a stage and a guitar nigga with an amp already set up. What is this? They ain't got no mics or nothing. And nobody would be able to hear you over the city noises, I guarantee it. I do kind of like these velour cheetah tracksuits. And also, they do have this one song, Amiga's Cheetahs. That shit is fire though. I'll give them credit for that one. The movie is set in New York City and it's about the girls entering a singing competition, trying to get a record deal, groundbreaking stuff. Never saw that before. Nah, I'm joking. It's a feel good movie. It's nice for the kids, girl power, all that. Shout out to girl power, bro. Anyway, that's it for this part. I have way more entries too. I'm gonna save that for part three. I ran out of time. If y'all even want a part three, if you do, leave some suggestions in the comments. Let me know. Shout out to all my cheetah brothers and sisters out there. All right, it's over. DJ, I want your ass. Yeah, man, where my man Jimmy Early at? I'm putting him in the thumbnail, man. <laughs> Got a hole in the bed. Mercedes Benz. <laughs> yeah, put my man Jimmy Early in that bitch. <laughs> Damn, where he at? Ray, right, yeah. Hold on. Hold on now. Let me get it together now, y'all. Yeah. Murphy's in it, though. He even gets his own song. <laughs> yeah. Keep him right there, man. My man was jamming right there. You know what I'm saying? Even that, I meet you no harm. I never meant to make you cry. You were the only one I've ever loved in my life. On the way side for me to show it. Yeah, I got to let you know it, man. Come on, he was singing. Larell wasn't Larell wasn't having it though, you know what I'm saying? I I Larell was fine. Oh. Anika Noni Rose, she is fine. You hear me? And she can sing Jesus. And then her then that song her and Eddie did Patience. Oh man. Dream Girls was a good time. It was. Now that, of course, like. <laughs> and I just want to talk to Samson. That was the funniest part on this shit. Alright. He did make some tough ass songs on this movie. I ain't gonna lie. He, he definitely did. But I feel like Terrence Howard definitely should have got a lot, a lot more money t towards it. But don't at me. Or look up. Look up some stuff, though. Look up. Do the research, because, yeah, he said it in a couple of interviews. Al Pacino. Like, I ain't really pay attention to his rap joints on here. I just wanted to see the rest of the movie. <laughs> and he was hilarious. Tropic Thunder is hilarious. Yeah. It's still a hilarious movie, man. And I think, like, Robert Downey Jr. part, it's like, yeah, he was in blackface, but it showed just how a lot of like directors be throwing some white folks into like black roles like it'd be pretty fuck it'd be hilarious it'd be crazy to me man like it'd be crazy man like like how they be having like some of them play moses remises and all that like man come on man come on man uh thugnificent hilarious all the time and he did put out to me he did put out some bangers <laughs> You just mad cause your ass is old. I didn't even know. This is the reason why he annoyed me. I didn't even know that he. I don't even watch Moesha like that, so that's surprising to me. But I have watched the Parkers way more than uh, Moesha. 
Yeah, I like freestyle you. I, I'm gonna just say I like freestyle you, and I ain't gonna really get too much into it. Then you had the Black Power Ranger up there rapping. I mean, he, of course, at the end of the day, he's black. Uh, I didn't watch Empire like that. Um, I don't believe I will watch it like that to begin with. Uh, but some of the songs on there was pretty cool. Some of them. Uh, it's a lot of songs Hakeem did. I was like, this is, uh, trash. I'm just, uh, we just gonna stick to the singing. Uh, this was, okay. Let me wait for this to go off. God damn. Nobody is buying this, bro. This is another group. CB4 is a classic, but it was supposed to be goofy. You know what I'm saying? Charlie Murphy did bring, like, a lot of the funny to it. Um... But yeah, Chris Rock. He, I mean, Chris Rock was Chris Rock, man. Like he was, he was cool, but of course he was annoying at the same time. You know, I ain't no easy. He did an appearance on the damn joint. Uh, I already did Dream Girls and uh, Cheetah Girls. I never watched, so yeah. But man, Jimmy Early back up there again. But other than that, yo, if y'all like this, <laughs> yeah. Bring my man Jimmy Early back. But <laughs> I'm sorry, yo. He was my favorite character in the book. <laughs> but yo, if y'all like this one, man, make sure you smash the like button. Comment down below what y'all thought. Share the video and subscribe to the channel for your boy, man. Peace, love, blessings. See y'all in the next video. We out.